You don't have the contact. Today on The Grid, it's our blind photo critique show. Our special guest is Rod Mac Daddy, Love Daddy, Big Daddy, P Diddy, Dad Daddy Harlan. And we're giving away some relatively cool prizes. And it all starts in just 60 seconds. It is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to Tamron-USA.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X. Powered all the right places. Go to Profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to Platypod.com. Hey everybody, welcome to The Grid, Scott Kelby here, and we have a very special guest here, a dear friend of mine for many, 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 many years, which means he's old. No, I was kidnapped as a young child by he you. He was kidnapped as a young child by mm. us, Mr. Rod Harlan. Welcome to the show, Mac Daddy. I'm glad to be here, buddy. And uh, so Roddy and I, we go way back... Uh, before we actually had a video department here at Kelby <laughs> One, Rod used to do the keynote videos for Photoshop World. So that opening like extravaganza movie, he's the guy that started it all. He's the one that makes us do all that work to this very day. He's He My started bad. it. My bad. Now he does all big commercial products and projects and stuff and it's forgotten about us. But he, <laughs> but to bring to help him remember us, we brought him back today. So I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here, man. So uh, he's a photographer. He's a videographer. He's a video editor. He's an entrepreneur. He's a love daddy, a Mac daddy, a daddy daddy. And that's him right there. And who gave <laughs> me the Mac daddy name? I did. Yes. And yeah. do you remember how? Well, because we, we all started being Macintosh guys. This whole thing started off right. us doing a newspaper about Macintosh computers. And you needed a, you wrote articles for the magazine. I did. And you needed a cool Mac name. Also at the time, it was Chris Cross's. Song. Oh, yeah. Jump. Daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. jump. Mac, Mac Daddy, Daddy make you jump, jump. jump. So uh -huh. That's it. And all of a sudden, I look at the magazine one day, and in my byline is, you know, blah, 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 by Rod, Mac Daddy Harlan. And it's just it. stuck. It's just been there. Then there was T-shirts at the at the uh, Macworld magazines that yeah. we used to sell. And, yeah. Well, enough reminiscing. Anyway, uh, we uh, where's Eric? Eric is shooting rockets. Oh, cool. It's SpaceX rocket launch over at the Cape. And, of course, Eric's like, see, yeah. you got to go shoot. So he's shooting. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get to see some great rocket shots from Eric shortly. So uh, we wish him the best. Every time you do one of those launches, you know, they can always delay it right. or cancel it or postpone it. And it's they make the photographers go out there so early and right. set up all their stuff. And Eric's like in a swamp setting up remote cameras. <laughs> He's shooting from on top of the vehicle, the assembly building, all this this stuff that he goes through to make all this work. Is, it's an and tremendous. And right now it's cold in Florida. It's and never cold in Florida. It's never cold, right but it's, it's colder like, today. Yeah. And so if it doesn't go off, it's just you feel really bad <laughs> because they don't just go, hey, the shoot's canceled. Get in the bus and we'll take you out there. They're like, the bus leaves tomorrow to go get your gear. It's it's. When it, when it launch goes bad for photographers, it goes incredibly bad. Anyway, a couple things real quick. We want to. Uh, I want to thank all of the new members around the world who joined Kelby One. You had uh, a huge Cyber Weekend. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, it was. It a, was yeah like everywhere. We were everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. We are. Well, we have. It's our best deal of the year. We want to make the most of it. More people joined Kelby One during Cyber Weekend uh, than any other time. So we're yeah. very excited. That's like our our dashboard. So when you're a member. You know, this is kind of where you start off. All your archived courses and all that stuff is there. So anyway, so that's uh, that's the gig. So I want to welcome everybody. We had so many people from around the world. Uh, today, our topic is blind photo critiques, which is awesome. We're going to be a uh, bunch of people sent in photos. We're going to review about maybe 20 of them, if we can stick to our three-minute uh, oh, time. And right. Roddy's in charge of that today. He's very excited. Um, we got some shout outs from people all over the world. You want to read the shout outs there, Mac Daddy? Sure. It says, Hi, folks. Greetings from Germany, Sasha. Hi, Good Sasha. evening, folks. And then we got uh, Hello Grid Gang. That's from Mike. Yep. And Deb says, Hi, all. Hi, Deb. And Hello Grid Nation from <laughs> Linworth. And hello, Gridians. Man, you guys, you have like your own name. I didn't know. It was like a whole like a Beyonce yeah, tribe they, type thing. They do their own thing. Okay, I they're, got it. They're, they're on their own. They come up with their own things, which I love. Carla <laughs> says, hello, everyone. Mike says, hello, Grid folk. Uh, Jackie from Princeton, New Jersey is checking in. All right, Jackie. So 
All right. Yeah, we got, we Chiki Nando's here from a sunny but chilly Lisbon, oh. Portugal. Chiki Nando. Chiki Nando. I Chiki. just love that name. Yeah. You would love Nando if you ever met him. He's the greatest guy. And a really good photographer. Really good. Like, cool. I say, he's the, I say he's the best photographer in all of Lisbon, Portugal. And it's a big city. He's really good. Uh-huh. Everybody knows him there. He's like a hero. Uh, Mike's here. Frank's here from Baltimore. Jock's photos. Aloha from the snow forecast for the summits of 14,000 foot. Oh, he's up on Mauna, Mauna Kea. Kea. Yeah. We've both he, been there, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I met him in Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I froze my butt. I've hey. never been colder than in Hawaii. Hey, would not be the... Oh, no kidding. Snowing up there. Because you don't expect it. So you, you do don't, not. You don't take a jacket with you. No. And then you decide, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to shoot these amazing photographs. And then I'm, I went up there. I said, I'm going to shoot time lapse. So I'm up there even longer. And then all you're doing is just putting on like five t-shirts or whatever hey, you brought. Wait a minute. A didn't of- didn't you take me to Hawaii? Oh, for a, for a training thing. Yeah, he did yeah, a training yeah, yeah. conference and yeah. I got to go to Hawaii on the Mac Daddy. <laughs> I, I was fun. That was a long time ago. Dude. Hey, <laughs> it's time for you to do another workshop okay, in Hawaii. Right, fair enough, fair hey, enough. wouldn't be the grid without Riverside Ronnie checking in. Hey, uh-huh. Ronnie and Eric's here from New York. All right, let's get to work. We had lots of stuff to do. We got giveaways today. We're giving one of these away. It is a Platypod Ultra, the greatest thing ever. What? It's out of focus, but if it was in focus, imagine how cool it would be. There it is. <laughs> All right. This is it. It is what you use instead of a tripod. It fits in your pocket. It's made of aircraft aluminum, commercial aircraft aluminum. It's the greatest thing. Everybody loves them. Everybody's got one. We're going to give away one today. And all right, this is big. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my. We're giving away a brand new book. It just came out. It's not my book. It's cl- this is close to one of my books that you can get because <laughs> it's a series I started. So this is the first extension in the series. It is Dave Clayton's brand new book. So Dave Clayton, you guys know Dave. Hey, Dave in the British, UK. British superstar Dave British Clayton superstar. came out with a book called How Do I Do That in InDesign? And, and it is fantastic. It's the first in this series. Dave's name right there. It's the first in this, in this series. So I did one called How Do I Do That in Lightroom? Right. How Do I Do That in Photoshop? Dave's a graphic designer by trade. And uh, he did How Do I Do That in InDesign? This is such a great book. Flip it around to the back so everybody can see his picture. Because he's going to love that. There's Dave. Come on, you zoom, know, zoom back I, can in. you get you, in you this tight? Get it's, you gotta get, get that tight. Look, and you'll see how happy he is he on the is back. He's so happy. There he is. That's him. That is the happiest so, man who's ever written so there, a book. So there is, yeah, he's he's a great, great guy. He's a wonderful teacher. And this book is, is fantastic. Now, I'll tell you the same thing I said about my Photoshop on my Lightroom book. This is not for people who are brand new to in design. Like, oh. I just want to learn it. This is for. I'm going to turn to this page and I need to do this. Like, I know I need to do this one thing. Like, how do I apply a character style, right? Because the whole book is how do I apply a character style work? So you know that you want to apply a character style. I just don't remember how to do it. So you that's turn awesome. to the page. So that's basically a reference book. You don't have to sit yes. there and read it from chapter one no. to chapter. It's just like, no. oh, I don't remember how to do that. Yeah. Pa, pa, pa. Yeah. And these books have been incredibly successful for that reason, because you don't have to. It's not like a read it on the plane. Now, you can. You'll learn all kinds of tips and sure. stuff. But Dave did a great job with the book. We're very proud and very excited. And we're giving away. This is like literally hot off the off the press, brand new. <laughs> It's going to be a great book for for the designer on your holiday gift list. So we're going to give one of those away today. Congratulations to Dave. He's an awesome guy. He did a great job with the book. We're very excited. And uh, that's where you'll go to the our webcast form. No, you don't have to go there. You can do that. But we're going to we're going to draw live for some prizes. Isn't that correct? So we're drawing live. So we don't know why that even came up. Hey, let's go on. Let's look at some images. So people have sent in images, people that watch the show. And what we tell them is we're going to give them honest critiques, not mean critiques. We're just going to be honest. We're going to go, here's how this, how it is. Rod's timing it for three minutes. We're going to look at the three photos. We're going to give you our honest opinion. Here now, we go. I told people on Twitter that it was honest, but loving. Now, 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 now you're saying that the loving, there might be an asterisk on the loving. I think loving is pushing it a bit. Okay. But because, it's honest. Because loving helpful. loving is what your, your spouse gives you about your photography. Oh, I see your point. I so see, your, your, yeah. your spouse would go, Oh, that's nice, honey. But I just mean that we weren't going to be mean. For we're no not reason. mean. No, we're not, not mean for at no all. reason. But we're, we're, we're mean for a reason. But we're. I'm going to tell you, like, if you're a friend and you're like, "Hey, dude, what do you think of these?" You know, I'm going to tell you, like, mm. yeah, all right, okay, right, we're good. But they'll run the gambit, right? Every time we do these, we get all kinds. So let's take a look at this first one. First one. All right, and let's see if you guys can see. There we go. All right, this is our first image, and I'll I'll let you look at all three, and then we'll kind of go through them. Hmm. All right. Well, these are awful. No, no, no these are great. No, these are great. These are obviously, I mean, this is obviously a very accomplished photographer. The uh, the the retouching looks nice. The lighting is very good. 
Uh, the poses are interesting. I mean, these are these are all very nicely done, and I'm not going to have a whole bunch of critiques on these because these are just very very well done. Um, this is is kind of nice. You got the kicker light in the back. Only thing I would say, I mean, and I, I realize I have to be nitpicky because these are good photos. So when they're really good, you don't have these big sweeping things. No. So if I had to do this over again, and they did, so I'll tell you the things they did right. But first, I'll tell you the thing they. I don't. I don't want to say it's wrong, but the kicker light, you might lower that a little bit. Like it doesn't need to be quite that bright. So let's say it's at a power of five. Turn it down to three and a half. It's still harder light. It still gives you the nice separation. I, I'm not sure it needs to be that bright, but that's nitpicky. The other thing is on this side, there looks like there's a, some kind of a fill light or something, maybe a tad more on that, but that's just, this is minor. Here's what they did that I think is really right. And that is it, the, the, um, the portrait is brighter up top and then it gets low, mm -hmm. you know, darker as you go lower. And that's really mm -hmm. what you want. The downside, if I had to say what's wrong with it. So all the other things were nitpicky. Her shoulder is about the brightest thing in the photo. Mm. You don't really want her shoulder. You would want her face to be. Let me see if I can jump you over to camera raw. Can I take it over to camera raw? All right. So here's what I would do. I would take the adjustment brush. And by the way, I do this to every portrait. I go to plus 30. So 0 0.30. And I paint over the face to just to bring out that area. Just to make sure that your eye goes up there. And so see, it's a little dark on that side of her face. Now, again, you might be looking on a different monitor. You know, every monitor is different. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think she might go as high as 0.5, which is as high as I go. So 0.5, half a stop brighter on her face. And then I would go to the new button with the adjustment brush here and go to the highlights and just tamp down that shoulder a little bit. Her shoulder's just too bright. There you go. So let's look at a side-by-side -side here. You can kind of see. So the before is on the left. And let me get rid of these overlays. Before is on the left, after is on the right. It's subtle changes. They're little changes. But, but it makes a difference. Yeah, unfortunately, the photographer's so good that there's not that much you I can tell you. You got seconds for the last one. And uh, this is it's very cool, very moody. I love the hair. I love all the tats. Uh, it's a little uh, little dark in some places. But you know what? You're doing it right. It's it's The fall off is really good. I wouldn't... I, Take that back. Leave it as it is. The only thing, if I was going to change anything, is the earring is really popping. It is, isn't it? I was the say earring that. is popping. If you want them to look at the earring, great. I, you probably don't, so I would tamp that down. We're out of time. Great job. We're off to a good start. Let's hit another one. All right. All right. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm liking where that's going. Next one. We'll look at the three images first. One. Three. Okay. I, I can tell mm. you what one problem. I know. Mm. <laughs> I'm feeling that same thing. You, you have two problems here. Mm. Problem number one is, and, and I'm going to give you a, a, like a high five and then take it back real quick. <laughs> That's you, wrong. You, you did a long exposure. Good. Good. You, it was the right thing to do. Now we're going to take it back real quick. Your long exposure isn't nearly, nearly long enough. Mm. So I'm going to say either you used F22 or maybe mm. a polarizer to try to make your exposure mm. longer. Mm. You needed like a 10 stop ND. This mm. needed to be like a three minute exposure. And you probably did like a 12 second exposure. It's just not long enough. I like the way you composed it and all. And you know what? Look at this one too. You know what's wrong with this photo? Not long, long enough, enough exposure. Yeah. Like yeah. this is way lot long enough. Like this needs to be. Yeah. Three, three like times. three minutes. Yeah. yeah. Like not, not 30 seconds, like three minutes. And the last one. And it's kind of, but but the last one has the same problem that these other ones have. You're you're way too vibrant. Your colors don't look natural. So you would have to take your vibrance down a ton. Like, can I get over to camera? Go to your vibrance, not saturation. Go to your vibrance and just take it down. Right then and there, something dude. like yeah. that. No, seriously. But still, th this is is not going to be a great picture because you didn't do a long enough long exposure. You were on the verge of a great picture. But it, it, yeah. it fix the color. The color's just too over the top on all of these. The color's over the top here a little bit. It's just everything's oversaturated. They don't look realistic. This one needs a much longer exposure. And this one is it's not nearly as interesting as the other photos. You you have a good sky, and I think you're kind of banking on that. But the rest of it's kind of yank. But uh, and long exposure really wouldn't have helped here. You know, it would help here better subject. Uh, now. One thing that might or make a this, different angle. Yeah, I was just gonna say let's yeah. let's crop this yeah. in, yeah, 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 and yeah. then I think we might have something.
Yeah. Let's go in here. And what if we just kind of, yeah, you know, like really got in on this. If that's what you're shooting, that little ugly house is, is, is drawing your eye. That white house that's drawing your eyes, right. taking you away from what you were really taking a picture of. And this still does not make it a, a great picture. I think it makes it a bit stronger. All right, let's blast out of that and hit one more for the break. Let's go to this one. Uh, let me try opening these in camera raw because they're, they're kind of small. Yeah, there we go. All right, here we go. So we have this one and that and that. Flash dance. Okay. So <laughs> That is the flash dance pose. I see what you're trying to do here. I <laughs> like what you're trying to do. The only one that really achieves it is the third one. These other two... Well, they're they're going for the full silhouette, yeah. Right? Yeah, but it's it's that harsh light behind it that isn't right. Yeah, the the the, the well, I'm, I'm okay with the silhouette, but it's so okay. It, it, I don't know how to say this. I've seen this done a bunch of times, and it looks really cool. These don't. This one does. Yeah, the third one. This one has that because look. it's more subtle, and yeah. you can see, it, and it's not all blacked out. Yeah. See, see, the others are, are a complete ink ink spot. Yeah, yeah. These are these, those have like highlights, right. That kind of edge everything out, and these don't. But what's weird is, look at the like, especially in this other one, not this one. I'm sorry, this one. Look at the gap under her arm. Yep. The gap down here. The gaps up here. Yeah. Her poses would have to be much more dramatic. I think for this to work, this pose is very dramatic and it works. Yeah. And you also see the highlights and stuff. Rod's right. The little highlights on the edges make a big difference. Yeah. These. Well, not so much. So I, I like what you're doing. Keep doing it. But I think you need to have some poses when, when you do silhouettes, they, they have to be because you don't see any facial expression. Right. Yeah. They have to be really strong. Right. Those are kind of weak. How weak kind of weak. All right. Before we go, hmm. Very important. Two of my favorite people in the world are in the chat. <laughs> Terry White and Victoria Pavlov both saying hi. Hi, Terry. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Are, they, are they seriously most awesome people? Oh, absolutely. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Awesome. All right. We're going to take a short break. We come back. More pictures, more stuff. Don't go away. Mac Daddy in the house. Mac Daddy in the house. Mac Daddy in the house. Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic, you need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a Platypod. The Platypod is your go anywhere, do anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree or hanging on a bench at church, or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The Platypod.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here with the Mac Daddy, and we are, it's Blind Photo Critique Day. A couple little housekeeping things. Uh, my holiday gear guide is out. So every year for 14 straight years, I publish a Gonzo holiday gear guide. It is out right now. And uh, if you go to my blog, scottkelby.com, and look, I think on like, you know, last Monday or something, you'll find it. Or if you go on my Facebook or Twitter, you'll see it in my feed. Um, it's uh, all my favorite stuff from this year. So it's stuff that I actually own and use. And so uh, it's, um, I have stocking stuffers, like stuff for like eight bucks, 12 bucks, you know, and then all the way to, you better be buying a gift for a holiday, <laughs> for a Wall Street hedge fund manager. Really, there it is. There's my holiday gear guide. And so it's, and I've got all kinds of cool gifts in there. So anyway, go, go check it out. And uh, yeah, that's uh, over on my blog there. And well, that's our cyber deals you saw there. Okay. Also. If you live anywhere in Florida, next Monday, this coming Monday, December 9th, I will be in Fort Lauderdale with my last tour of the year. It is my ultimate photography workshop. We already have hundreds of photographers signed up, so Ooh, come on down. And awesome. don't be the only photographer in the South Florida area <laughs> not to be there. Then you'll hear about it on Tuesday, like, oh, I should have gone. So if you know somebody in Fort Lauderdale, tell them and all that stuff. All right, one more thing. I went and bought, I, I, I went and bought something for myself. Like an art today, like an art thing. I did. I bought an art thing. So can I show you on my screen? Yeah. So I went and bought a beautiful print today right here from wishing well photography and, uh, Oh, in Nottingham in Nottingham, United Kingdom. Oh, anyway, nice. uh, uh, th these are just absolutely stunning. I'll show you the one I bought. I bought this one right, right here, right in the middle. So I just ordered it today. And so hopefully it'll be here for the holidays. It comes with free shipping, so I can maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's for my house. I'm not giving you as a gift. Uh, I have actually a wall in my house where I think it would look absolutely beautiful. But I think these are wonderful, and these are from a uh, these are taken by a photographer who is a friend of the grid. And uh, you know, seriously, it is hard. I mean, think of how many think of still life just as a as a photo element. How how many like what a thousand years that we've been doing still oh, life? Oh yeah. So. To uh, the simplest things, I think a lot of times are the hardest things to make look good. Yeah. Like, do you agree with, with what I'm saying? Oh, like? yeah. Because but, it's so, like, it's been, I mean, think of all the, you go into any, you go into the Louvre and there's still life, you know, and it was painted, you know, 800, 1,000 more years I know. ago. Crazy. And then you think all the photography and everything else. So to be able to do that and bring something, if you will, new to the, you know, that niche, yeah. that style. Well, take a look on screen and I'll, sh I'll show you what it, what it is yeah, that drew, what, that drew what me drew to you? her. Yeah. Well, number one, it's, it's her use of light. I think is her use of light is like the Dutch old masters. I mean, it's like, this is what you would use for fabulous portrait light. But I think what she does particularly well is the things that she pairs together as an author. I love that there's a book in there. Right. All right. I love that there's a red thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but all the colors and all the fabrics and the textures work not just in this picture so i'm gonna go back so you can see other ones but, you see, but it's it's not only colorful but it's also not it's it blends in with the it doesn't it's not overpowering how about that yeah hey right? look at look at these three right what if you put these three like in your kitchen right. or in a, in a dining room or right. something they're real beautiful let me give you the the website to her her it's wishing well photography and to go right to her store you would go to dot ecwid.com, but you can just go to wishingwellphotography.com and then you will find her her store. There's a little button to it, but it's wishingwellphotography.ecwid.com and there's all kinds of beautiful prints. And I, I've seen her work evolve and I, I fell in love with it earlier this year. And I, I, I said, I, I think she was the most improved photographer in the shortest amount of time really? for someone who went to creating really just beautiful, beautiful work. So anyway, I ordered that one and hopefully it'll be here before Christmas. And now maybe I've guilted her into it. It'll come here. It'll get here before Christmas. It's not a present. I'm going to put it. I, I have a wall that I know that it'll, it'll go wonderfully in. So anyway, That's but stuff. I just want to tell you about that. Okay. Um, let's get to it. Let's go back and check. You got the three minute timer ready I'm to roll? Ready. I'm ready. All right, I'm right, here, here we go. Speaking of, speaking of London, let's start off. Well, speaking well she, of that thing she wasn't we, really in London. Yeah, she but, was actually no, she's in, up in Nottingham. In but, Nottingham. But we were just talking about colors and about that vibra that saturation, that extra vibrant. Let, let's see all three of them. Yeah, there you go. Super vibrant. Now, here's what I would say. 
if your audience is photographers, these are all too too colorful. Right. If if you're trying right. to like, I'm going to enter a competition at my local photography group, or I'm going to show this at a photography talk. These are all yeah, they're too gonna colorful. Down. They're gonna yeah, say, well, they're going to be. Much. Yeah. You need to tone it down. If you're selling these to the public, oh, you're right. People, public loves. They will love them. Public they will be loves. like, oh my gosh, I love the color. Right. Hey, that's law. You know what that is? That's La Sagrada Familia in ah. in in Barcelona with all the cranes cloned out. So it's always <laughs> it's under construction and will be for another thirty years or something. They, they came up with an ending date, but it's way in the future, the and the they've future. been working on it for like eighty or hundred years. So it's always got construction cranes, which is a shame. But it was designed by Gaudi. It's an incredible, yeah. unbelievable. It looks like Disney designed. Like if Disney could design right. a cathedral, right. that would be it. Wow. And it's wonderful. And the, the pictures are very nicely done. And you know what? Normally, I don't like things on the edge of the frame, but you've kept them subtle enough where it doesn't bother me, like the little plant coming in and you have a little tree on the side. But these are very nicely done. That would be a wonderful postcard to sell. Yeah. You know, for people that that have gone to London and things like that's the Yeah. No, these are like you said, Tower these Bridge. are these are sellable if you want to go to sell yeah, if you want to. Are... But listen, like that one right there, if you put that up in an art gallery, yeah, boom. And you got a bunch of photographers, there, you're going to get All right. You're gonna get no, we have Oh, we we're got, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good job though. Nice. I mean, very well uh very well composed, all very nice. This one's a little tight on the roof, like a little tight. You little, can, a little more headspace, right? You can go and add the headspace. That would be easy to do in Photoshop. Just, sure. you know, anyway. So, but but good job. So that's, we're back off to a good start. Let me move on to my next one here. And let's see who we've got next. All right, here we have three images here. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's great. Ooh. Really great. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. <laughs> so, wow, these are just tremendous. Yeah. Uh, first off, the timing here is just spot on. This right. is just, I mean, such such joy and such a great moment. You talk about capturing a moment. Yeah. Now, let's, now they're wearing very, very bright outfits, but nothing's oversaturated. Like the colors are spot on. And, and this is what I'm talking about. This is a very colorful picture, but I would not touch the saturation. These are right on the money. Uh, same thing here. Yeah. There, nothing is oversaturated here. It's like very, very, like their color, the way they're handling color. And then these are just great. These are like, I need to enter these in competition photos. Right. All three of them. Any one of these is going to win whatever competition you go in. I have nothing but love, no critiques. Right. You're awesome. Yeah. I wish I was taking pictures like this. <laughs> Good on you. Yep. Go, 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 go. All right. Next, let's take a look. Now he's got a little frequency separation on the face. That's a retouching technique. But uh, they're, these are, they're all technically fine. I, I would get rid of this white up in the corner. See how that white is drawing yeah. your eye? Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that, it's all technically fine. But remember, it, when it's a portrait, now this is, this is going to be weird. When it's a portrait, you it's about the person. If it's fashion photography, it's about the clothing. Yeah. If this is a portrait, it should be darker down here in the bottom third of the photo. Mm. If it's fashion, it should be left as is. But I would I would take these green leaves on the left top corner and, put them over and the right. move them over there and fill that in. You can't have that white up in the corner. That's, mm -hmm. that's just a technical issue. You, you got to fix that. All right. This one, I don't see anything technically wrong with it. I think it's kind of nice. It's um, it's not my particular style, but I think it's well carried out. Like putting people upside down is not <laughs> not right. my style, right. but I don't want to count you down on that. That's your style. It's kind of cool. I think that's it's well pulled off, and this is you know kind of humorous and stuff. It looks like it's designed for something to go up here. Yeah. So that's I'm, what I was going to say. I'm going to say you did this for a commercial ad correct. or something. And if that's the case, it's awesome. If you did not, right. then it has got way too much headroom. That's literally also what I was going to say. It looks yeah. like a title is going yeah. up there for yeah, something. Yeah, and also it's so brightly lit. But here's what I would say is it's okay that her towel is, is, is pretty bright. This floor is really bright. Just darken that floor up a bit. There's no reason for the floor to be. And look, the floor is darker over here. Yeah, than it is so on the left. So you can tell, okay, yep. the light was over here. You can see the highlight on her leg. 
And the highlight here. So the highlight, the light's over here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and just darken that up very easily uh, with the adjustment brush in Camera Raw. But good stuff. I mean, you know, good. Even though it's not my style, I right. appreciate it all. And, and your photography is good. A couple little minor things, but, you know. But it's it's not about you turning in things that that are my particular style. Right. All right, here we go. We got three images here. Here's the first one. And the second one's kind of small. Let's see if we can open the second one in camera raw. There we go. It's a little bigger. That's the most interesting that one. That is far in a way. That was the next words out of my <laughs> mouth. That's the most interesting one. And you know what? It is very hard these days to make an interesting street photo because a lot of street photos just look like, oh, there's a person, there's a person, there's another person looking out of a bus window. I'm going to jump out the window. Right. But this is an interesting, <laughs> it's just interesting. It, technically, he's too close to the left edge of yes. the frame. Yeah, we wish we That's could. unfortunate. Right. The right, the space on the right side of the frame is perfect. Correct. Because you want well, them, like yeah. they're looking off at something and you're wondering what that is. But this is just, you know, five kids and the dad with a cigarette. I mean, it's a, it's a great moment. The black and white treatment is nice. money. Yes. And um, I, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, but I got to tell you, the other two images are completely meh. Like, this looks like I just grab my cell phone and click. And and, and this one as well. It's it's Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you guys can tell. This is straight up out of focus. You can't probably tell on the small screen. This is straight up. It is not in focus. If anything would be in focus, if any of it's in focus, it's this right here and i don't think it's even in focus i would say the whole photo is is kind of out of focus um uh, so i'm i'm thinking well no it's more the of this yeah yeah more of that less of this and this yeah more of this yeah that's yeah there you go all right rolling on we're doing good on time my friend oh i'm glad we're doing real good all right i think we're gonna see that same situation here so we've got um Looks like Florence, I think. And your daughters. <laughs> and another really cool place. Uh, I really like your cityscape stuff. However, you know, you could have made this so much stronger. The fence. Step forward to the fence so the fence isn't in the, the shot. Fence. Step forward. Walk up to the fence. Yeah. And then you take away this barrier between you yeah. and this amazing place. Yeah. So really cool shot. I really, really do like this one. The fence is killing it. You're supposed to walk up to the fence. This is a shot of your daughters that you took with your cell phone. It's fine. It, it doesn't. Don't do any more of this. This is for Facebook. This is, hey, the kids were racing this week. We had such a great time. It's not photography. It is a, a snapshot of your kids. It's fine. This is very nicely done. Yeah. So this is nicely done. This is really nicely done except for the fence. But still, even the fence, I'm going to give you a pass. And eh, Don't send in that. Okay. So that was easy peasy. Yeah. We went through those quick. All right. Uh, we're going to, we're gonna uh, in a minute, we're going to be back. But I want to mention that, so... This Friday, we have a gallery show in our gallery. It wasn't part of our competition. Uh, we're featuring me. Yay. Finally. So, yeah. So, so seriously, I, how long have you had the gallery? We've had the gallery a couple of years now. Right. So uh, I finally. And, and yeah. so how many people have you put in the gallery? I don't know. A bunch. Um, somebody every three or four months. So. Okay. And I understand that you couldn't be first in your own gallery because that's yeah. just a little right. presumptuous. But dude. Finally, I know I'm very it's excited. Like people love your stuff, so well, this is going to well, be. Well, you're very kind, but no, so so this on. is this is 20 images from this book I've been working on for a long time uh, called uh, "The Great Indoors." So it's classic interiors from around the world. I've got uh, 20 different prints, and so this Friday, if you're a Kelby One member, we're inviting you to come to our studios, and uh, it's we have a wine and cheese reception at seven o'clock, and then we're going to do. Uh, an artist interview. So Larry Becker will be here interviewing me. And so uh, it, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, you can come if you'd like. It's free. And so it's free. It's free booze is what it is. Just come for the booze and then leave. I'll never know if you came or not. Do, do people no, have I'll to be, get any kind of like ticket registration? They have to go right there. Okay. So they have to go to, let me get the address, gallery.kelby1.com. Okay. So gallery.kelby1.com. Click on the register for the free event come and we'll have a great time i'll be here and and lots of folks will be here calibra will be here my brother will be here and uh i'm not, I, I'm, I'm coming and mac daddy will be I, here i'm, I'm coming you I'm can meet be the there. mac daddy in I, person i, I want to go ahead and tell people who are thinking about coming i've just 
seen. I got a little sneak peek. Phenomenal stuff. Well, you're very kind. No, Thank no, you. no. I mean, are you know who I give stuff. the credit to though? Calibra. And, and, well, I give Calibra. you got to give it to Calibra because Cal- she's the one who she stages it, thing. and it's, she stages it like a. She has a, a knack for going. These images go on this wall. Right. These and I walked around today. Now this is my first time having it. Right. Right. And I've seen other ones. She always does the staging, but I've I've never seen my own images. And I and they're so perfect. They're like. How did you think to put these in? You look at the wall and you're like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. Yeah, no. She just has a net. Now it takes hours. She doesn't go in and go, this goes here and that goes there. She works it and she's, she has a plan. And, and just so you don't think that he doesn't get critique too, like there are ones that Calibra looked at and were like, not that they're bad photos, but they were like, mm, that, doesn't doesn't, fit. That, doesn't, that doesn't fit. It that doesn't fit. go on this. Yeah, one that I really liked, she, she's, it's not that she thinks it's a bad photo, no, no, no. but it doesn't fit it doesn't with fit the, the, the story and mm-hmm. the theme and the colors. And, and she considers so many things. And it was really for me to look at my own work and see why she put these three photos together and how they all work together. It it's like really something perfectly it, makes sense. I told her, I said, you should do a class uh, honestly uh, on on how to sequence stuff. Now we have a class on company one on how to sequence your portfolio. Hers should be on how to curate a gallery show because she's really great at it. That's also, cool. um, Bay Photo does the printing. Oh. And they're exposed. You saw the print. Yeah, the expose the uh, what's that and thing w- called? The, the bar. Ex- exposure. Exposure. And it is it is for galleries. Like you would if you have a gallery or you you want to sell your prints like on the weekend as, at an art show. It's designed for for travel if you want to do it. But ours is permanent. But we're looking at the prints, and everybody is enamored with the print. Everyone's looking at how it's mounted and what's it made of because it's not glossy, Mm-mm. it's not satin, Mm-mm. it's, it's not, not matte. matte. What is it, one? It's I have no something idea. else. Do you have an idea? I have no idea. It's beautiful. I, I kept though. looking they're at it. They're absolutely stunning, and they're super sharp and crisp. But they're they're not. I don't know what it is. It's magic. Whatever they do. Yeah, it is interesting. Everything that we've done in that gets not just my stuff. Everyone's stuff in that gallery looks phenomenal, and it's because <laughs> of them. So you take Bay Photos printing. You have Kleber's curation, and Gene Kendra chooses the wine and the cheese. It's a magic night. It is magic. That's this Friday. I hope you all will come. It's uh, open to Kelby One members anywhere. And uh, hope to see you there. All right. When we come back, guess what we're going to do? What? More pictures. Oh, uh, there you go. With the three-minute timer and the Mac Daddy in the I'm house. I'm ready. He's ready. He's got his thing right there. It's Mac Daddy. <laughs> Hey, Troy Christopher Plota here with Plotiverse. Join us here, we have a whole class with lessons. This is for photographers, digital artists, art directors. This is the place that you're gonna go to go next level with your content. We're gonna teach you how to animate your photos, morph your photos, and post them in high res. This is where photography is going. You gotta get attention with your content, and this is the place to do it. There's no timeline, so if you've never worked in video before, this is a great segue. You just tell it which direction you want your image to move, and it does it. We're gonna show you how you can use Plotiverse as your website. So not only can you post and create custom portfolios, but it's a great way to show your clients in high res. So join me on kelby1.com. We're gonna teach you all about motion art and Plotiverse and how to animate your images and get more attention with your photographs.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, hey, we're back, me and Roddy. We're looking at your pictures. We are. <laughs> Let's do it. Here we go. The next one. This Blind Critiques. Here we go. Three shots. Whoops. Accidentally opened one in Photoshop. Well, let's just go back to where I was. Here we go. Now we go. All right. So we got three pictures. Here they are. Here's one. Architecture. I see he's going for the reflection. Yeah. Reflection thingy. Okay. People thingy. Yeah. So this is the vessel, which is an art installation in New York. It is across from the Jacob Javits Center, and it's a whole new Hudson Yards area. Used to be a right like a train yard, and now it is a beautiful restaurants, hotels, shops, and this thing that you can go in for free. The vessel is for free, but you have to get a ticket. Okay, that's not what this is about, though. So he, he, here's what I would say. Mm. These are kind of snapshotty. And what I mean about this is, I, I see what you're doing. This is the one that has the most, I'm going for art. Because it has a reflection. Has a reflection. But I, I can't say like, I go, ooh. It's mm -hmm. just like, okay, it's a reflection mm -hmm. shot. It's... Mm -hmm. It's 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 the closest to like a photograph. So so here's what's wrong with this one. The people. I mean, and, and what I mean, not that, but look at the people on the side. You got a you got a yeah. guy in the top left hand corner. You got one in the second row. You got those two not really doing yeah. anything important in the middle. Yeah, it, it's everything he just said. So it would be one thing if you had one person looking up towards the heavens with an interesting gesture. This is people just kind of you know, walking around and no one's doing anything interesting. It's not like a single, and this is going to sound weird, but odd numbers work really well. Like if you had one person mm -hmm. or three people, mm -hmm. five people, two people's kind of instant death for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So take out her or him and, and then the, you have, it's stronger, but you don't have a good gesture. They're not doing anything. Like, you know, Jay Maisel's book, Light, Gesture, and Color, which is, I think, his seminal work, is it, it supposes that you're, 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 for, for a photo to be successful, it needs to have one or more or all three of those. The color's nice, but there's no gesture. It's just some people walking around. If you had waited there with the nice color in the background to get that one moment, you'd go, well, you know, there's a lot of people there. It's hard to get that moment. Exactly. <laughs> it is hard to make a good photo. It's like you might have to wait an hour. You might have to wait two hours right. for that moment where someone's doing an interesting gesture by themselves. It, and it might not even happen that day. But but even if you had it there and you had that, well, I, I, I would still clone out. Or oh, these people got to go. Yeah, no, I'm just that, saying that stuff is... you got to wait until yeah. there's no one on the stairs just that one person right. doing something interesting that at that moment, it moves from a snapshot into a photograph and it becomes interesting. And it's just kind of, and this last one is iPhone snapshot straight the, up. The obviously the person here really likes grids, uh, geometric patterns yeah. in their, in their well, yeah, thing. I mean, you chose but to, they need to look at some of the ones that like, like, well, really you can just go to the vessel. Yeah. Like, just go to the vessels. Website. Just I'm go to Google and type in yeah. the New York City, the vessel, and, and look at other people's images. There are some stunning images of theirs, and, and yours are okay. But, I mean, I can't honestly, as a friend, if you were here, I wouldn't go, dude, you're rocking at this. Keep going. I'd be like, yeah, dude, this is kind of – I look like iPhone shots. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're, I don't mm -hmm. mean that as a cut to the iPhone. It's a great, a great camera. But they look like snapshots. They don't right, look like right. – They don't look like what I think you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. So keep working. All right, next. Let's see what we got. One, two, hmm. and three. Okay. So, <laughs> which is the which is your favorite? Because I already know mine. I, I like this one because of the drama of the lighting. Okay. But overall, I like this one better. I really like the red sky. Now you know the red sky had to be added in post. Because that's, I mean, the, the sky would not be normally red. So I, I, I have a couple of comments. Number one is I generally do not like a photograph of somebody else's art. So this is a sculpture. Interesting, yeah. That's somebody else's art, and you're just taking a picture of their art. Here's why I'm going to give you kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card is because you didn't just photograph it, but you photographed it in its surroundings. And the fact that it's surrounded by buildings the way you... you right. um, 
composed it and the red sky that that really helps it this one i i much prefer the lighting on the sculpture itself mm -hmm. the the building's all kind of lost this is kind of dramatic and stuff but i don't know what's going on here <laughs> this I, I, i'm sorry the photoshop work looks funky i don't even know what i'm looking at Remember the game Mist when it came on CD-ROM like 25 yeah, years ago? Oh my gosh! I, that, I think this is from Mist. Yeah, I think we, I think we <laughs> let this one go and don't show it again. These are kind of interesting. I like this one. I like the so imagine I like the com composition here and I like the light here. Now this is a different sculpture, obviously. If you could get that kind of dramatic light, I don't know if you can. I don't know. I don't know. But I would just say this. These are okay. I like this one. I like the lighting on this one. Please don't show this one again. <laughs> it's just we not, said I don't know what this is. It's it's disturbing. It looks like like some like a pterodactyl's legs are cut off or something. I just don't know. It's just funky. It's just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I do like this one. Yay. Kind of yay. No. All right. Let's move on. All right, what do we got? Empty. Sorry. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, this is kind of interesting. It is interesting. I like the long exposure stuff. So you're on a tripod, you got long exposure going. I love the movement of the people, uh, and this uh, is let, a good let's one. Let's see all three of them, and I'll come back. I'll tell you what I what I like about that one. All right. This is all right. Oh, I do like that. Now, this is obviously HDR to death. Yeah. And you've got the HDR looking clouds. You know what would save this shot? Yeah, get the, the, if you fix the clouds. But how do you fix the clouds? Here's what you do. Go back to the original image before you HDR'd it and just kind of make it look okay. Don't overdo it. Take that original photo in Photoshop and put it over this photo and just mask in your original sky. If you put your original sky with this photo, it would be awesome. Right. What's killing this photo is the, the yeah. no, no, HDR the acid looking rain sky. That yeah, that is coming from the yellow sky. Just put the is... original sky back in, and I think you'll have a really, really. This is a really cool shot, actually. Yeah, it is. Uh, this one is kind of eh, man. Yeah. But this, this to, looks like a touristy shot. Okay, so what I love about this one is the clocks. I, there's something about. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I like the clocks. I just because here's the deal. I've seen. The people looking like that, like I've seen that shot. I meaning that style, that that just that exposure, that whole thing. I've never seen it with clocks on the side. I, I just I just haven't. I no, just that's haven't cool. seen. So for for me, that adds a little something. Yep. To what could have been just a oh, I've seen All right. that. All right. Want to make this better? Here you go. Because this is this is a shot worth working on. Get rid of this text over here that says Grom. Right. So we are pre-programmed to read text. Yes. The first thing I saw when I opened this image was the word Grom, which is part of something else. I don't think the store is called Grom. <laughs> so get rid of that. Get rid of this new house right here. Right, right. Maybe get rid of the next one. I can't read the rest. It doesn't matter. You do those couple of things. This is a really sharp shot. I wouldn't say one more thing. You have two thirds of a black line. It's natural. I That's think it's what really I was there. Say next. Get rid of that. Yes. Just get rid of it. I'm telling you, this is a good shot. This is. This is worth spending a few minutes on this that's, one. That's Meh. not. That's not. This could be good. This could be really good. So you got a really good shot that needs a little work. A really good shot that needs a little work. Meh. <laughs> All right. Coming up next. What? I don't know how our break is here so quickly, but, but it is. So we're going to take another break, and then we're going to do some stuff. More pictures stuff. More picture stuff. <laughs> You're so good at throwing to these commercials. Meh. <laughs> Guess what? My name is Victor Fayash, and my latest class is on retouching tips. 
Now, these are not just regular tips. These tips I set down and compiled just for you, and I thought about what I wish I knew when I started out. So in this course, you're going to learn about masking. You're going to learn about tools. The pen tool is confusing, and it can be confusing if you don't use it the right way. But actually, it's really simple to use once you know this technique. We've all been there. We wanted to cut out hair from this nice background. I wanted to put our subject on a different one, but we couldn't deal with the flyaway hairs. I'm actually going to show you two ways of doing it efficiently with all the flyaway still present. You will be seeing tips and tricks you've never seen before. And these might come as beginner tips or advanced tips. If you want to elevate your work to the next level, you will need time. Now these tips and tricks are going to help you save time because these will make you more efficient and through the use of these you are going to get more precise and through that earn more money. Come join me on my class on calbiwan.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back, Scott and the Mac Daddy, and uh, we're supposed to be on time with our show today. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get <laughs> rolling. Here we go. All right. All right, we got three shots here. So you know what's interesting about these shots? I mean, they're, they're well done. They're all well done. This is obviously an accomplished photographer. They're all low contrast, but I think that they're intentionally low contrast. Yeah. I don't think that they're like, they did something wrong in camera. They're adding a lot of Photoshop effects, you know, these, you know, some stuff here, but like this photographer shot this at like F22. That's why you see the spikes of light, all Correct. the little spires coming off. So this photographer, they know what they're doing. I like their use of color here. I'm not 100% sure that those fireworks were really there, but I don't care. <laughs> I think it's well done. I think they were added in post, but that's okay. Yeah. That's like five high five. I'm a Photoshop guy. You don't, yeah, you don't lose like any <laughs> points for adding, for adding fireworks later. You get a pat on the back. And this is just a very nicely done. They composed this textbook. You right. have a foreground object. Right. You have a leaf. All the rocks are in the way. It's clean. I mean, all the rocks are leading the way. It's a clean shot. I, I wouldn't choose this style of post-processing myself. That does not make it a bad style. It's just not my mm. style. But I, I think I think this is just good, good job. Good, good. I like what you're doing. I like your night stuff. I think your night stuff is really good. This is this is a textbook classic nice waterfall. Yeah. But I think these are more interesting. Right. Like these are really interesting, and that's a waterfall. So <laughs> good job though. No, good, good photographer. All right, we're doing good on our time. Let's we're look at what we have here. All right. All right. So forget the last one. It's nothing. <laughs> it's just not it's just I mean it's technically done correctly. Right. I like your low angle. You're shooting from a nice low angle. It's lit on, but it's just at the end of the day, it's an empty gazebo. I mean, take that for the, the only thing that I can give him uh, or her is the flag flying straight through the middle there. You see that? Yeah, but that's... But that's it. But that's what I'm saying. But you that's the way something... the park was composed. Right. That, that's not like... You did something great to get that flag there. There you there. go. There you go. I mean, one thing is there's an open window and you positioned it there, but I mean, it's like, it's symmetrical. So, you know. Right. But it, it's just... This would be fine. You know who would love this? The people that designed the park. Oh. The <laughs> architect that designed it. But right. outside of that, it has kind of no mass appeal. So this... You did this technically right. You're there at a great time of year and all, right. but it's a messy shot. It is. When I talked about the last guy's, it was so great that the last guy's waterfall or last girl's waterfall was right there because right. it was so clean. Right. Look at all those leaves in there. Those leaves and stuff, it kind of, it, it's not helping the shot. It's junking now, it up. let me ask you a question, Scott. Would yeah. you take the time? Yes. No. Would you take the time to save this image and try to clean all that yes. up? Yes. Oh, okay, you would. Oh, yeah. See, I, I think I'd just let it go. Well, you know what it is? It needs to be close cropped a little bit more because all of this, see all this up area up in the top with white coming through? Like this is a candidate for cropping like nothing I've ever seen. <laughs> so let's go in here. And because what what is this shot about? The waterfall and the reflection and a little bit of 
fall. So we don't need all of this and we don't need all. Of, and when you do this, it fixes the problem that you have up there. there. There's a stronger photo inside that one. It, it, you don't need all that stuff. And that's not a great crop. That's no. kind of a crappy but crop. It, but it's, it's a but crappy it's better, crop. But it's still yeah, better. It's still better. Even a bad crop is better. But anyway, so just cleanliness in waterfalls is a big thing. And this doesn't have it. And the same thing kind of here. It's just kind of messy. Technically done well, like you used a long exposure. The Correct. water's all silky and stuff like that. But, you know. Hey, just want to remind Christina, we need some winners for our Platypod Ultra and for uh, the InDesign book. All right. So, uh, there, there, there are. So your technical skills are good. Let's work on composition and. And subject matter. And subject matter. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right, moving on. Oh, jellies. All right, we're going to make these bigger. Yeah, a little small. Jellies, kind of interesting. It's too messy for me to know what. So I, I like what you're trying to do, like a dugout picture. Right. Where we threw all, but it's just kind of a messy one. If you could simplify this scene, like take a glove or two out, like picture the same scene with one glove, and, and a ball. ball. Right. It, it would be much stronger. It looks kind of messy. Uh, and, and this is very nice. This is, is very pretty. Looks like it could be uh, the Vatican, but I could be wrong. Uh, but this this is very nice. I like your, your composition here. I think this has a lot of potential by simplifying the scene. It's hard for me to judge if this looks like an aquarium shot. It looks cool. But not bad. I mean, obviously, a skilled photographer. So good on you. Let's try to get through as many as I can because we only have a couple minutes left. Let's see what we got here. Architectural stuff. It's kind of nice. <laughs> this last one's kind of hard to see. So I, this is not my favorite of the three. I like this. But what I like about this is that there's one person. Right. That makes that stronger yes. than this other one back here that has a couple and then another couple. It doesn't super bother me because they're kind of mirroring each other. But this is these are really interesting buildings. And here I have to decide, is this yes. about the guy? Right. Or is it cuz then it's like street photography, but you seem like an architectural photographer and he, him looking directly at you? Right. It, it becomes more of a street photograph than an architectural. If he was walking down the stairs on his way to someplace, right. you know what? I, I don't know if I'm making that clear. When he engages directly with the camera, it's different than when what's happening here and what's happening here, where they're, you're capturing them doing their thing in the environment. It still looks like an architectural photo where this other one becomes a street photo because he's looking directly at the camera. Yeah, he's breaking that, that fourth wall. He's breaking the fourth wall, video Which, guy. Yeah. All right, we got time no for video. one more. We're going to have to bounce. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no, that's nice. I love the location. All right, so so here's what we got to do. Yeah. Get rid of the junk in the background. Right. So look at all these sticks yeah, over all here. Yeah, that's got to go. Is that helping your photo? It was Henry Matisse that said, <laughs> he did okay, right, Matisse? <laughs> But he said something along the lines of the elements in the photograph, if they're not helping the photograph, they're hurting the photograph. Exactly. And, and that's what he's saying. If, if the image, so are these wooden sticks in the background helping this photograph? No. Get them out of there. This is cool. Now, you could have made this shot cooler. You're down semi low. Right. He needs to get low, low. Get low, low. Get, get platypod yeah. low. Yes. And also, then, if you got platypod low, you wouldn't have the horizon line going right through the car. Oh, yeah. I was, yeah. So that, that, That's and so thing. this, look, this is low. Yeah. That's how low you needed to get with this. Right. I look at want, the distance, a difference I, I in the height. I want to change the sky in the first one, though. That's what's killing me in, in the first one. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I, I want more. Hey, I want, go get, go get, so Skylums. Uh, Luminar 4, baby. Luminar 4 has got a sky replacement tool oh that is money. It is money. It, now, you can use their skies. I used don't it last use night. their skies. I used it last night. Use your own sky. You got good skies. Start shooting skies. Yeah. Anyway, I like this. Uh, the post-processing, I would like to have a little more contrast. I uh, See, I like... That's closer. I, I was just going to say. That's oh, my God. We, we're really connected today. <laughs> I like this post-processing, 
put that post processing on these photos, I think you got a wiener. All right, we got some winners. Do Dave it. Clayton's book goes to DLC Photos. Congratulations. Right. And the Platypod Ultra, courtesy of our friends, the Platypod goes to Christopher Locklear. So, Christopher, congratulations. Yeah. Christina will be contacting you for the rest of your natural life. Okay. <laughs> So that's all we've, we have for today. Mac Daddy, thank you for being on the Dude, show. Dude, it was thrilled. He, I loved it. He, and so many times we were thinking the exact same thing. It was really <laughs> fun to have you on for this. I'm going to have you on again for something else unrelated, okay. just for fun. But the Mac Daddy's got to come back. Um, thanks to our, our sponsors and all of our crew. And also to Brigitte, who is the artist who I bought her print. I saw your comment in the thing. Thank you very much. It was a very kind comment, but I love your work. I'm a fan, and I'm excited to be hanging that. I have the perfect place in my house. I, I, it's neat to have an, uh, a print of someone that you connect with. Like, right. you, you know, I, I, I got to meet her when I was in London, and her husband, they're just awesome people. But it, it's more meaningful, right. you know. It's like, and I've also I've seen her work progress and, and get to the stage where you look at her prints, and to be honest with you, I think they're underpriced. <laughs> Just me, because I saw it, and I'm like, that's a deal. <laughs> anyway, I, I think that they need to be a lot more. I'm, I'm going to say this, too, on the other thing. I mean, so that, I mean, a, amazing work that she did. I want to move on to the gallery thing. I'm telling you guys right now, don't, don't listen to him. He's all Mr. Humble. Those tickets are going to sell out. So if you are at all thinking at well, all about Well, sure, coming, it's going to sell out. It's free booze and cheese. I know, but I'm just saying, the, I think you're going to have more people wanting to get in for this thing than you've ever had before. Well, I, 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 just, I would love to see everybody Friday night. Yay. Yeah. All right. So I'm to, just saying jump on that. All right. Thanks to Christina and everybody in the crew here. Michael, big, big Wani on the jib. And we will catch you guys uh Next week, I think next week, what are we doing next week, Christina? Is that our, okay, so Eric and I are going to do our holiday gift guide live. Cool. So we're going to do all kinds of holiday gifts and stuff into that. next week. Eric's always got weird stuff that nobody knows about. So I've got my stuff, but Eric always has. Like the unique weird now, thing. Now, he'll that... have also tech gadgets. So Eric will have, here's a thing for your phone. Here's a cool charger, you know. Yeah. I got a really cool charger from Anchor, too, I want to show. But uh, anyway. Got to run. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Mac Daddy. Thank you. Mac Daddy in the house. Mac Daddy on the jib. <laughs> All right, watch Ooh. how high this jib goes. It goes ridiculous. Watch. It's Go. like, Go. You know, it's Go. like a drone. Go. Look, it's a drone right it's now. Drone. It turns into a drone. Look how high it goes. <laughs>